Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Um, I have another Bantam video for you today and um, we're going to have a look at the swinging arm. Um, now aside from the pivot bushes which are worn out and uh, we'll deal with those in another video, um, I noticed that one of the rear suspension mounts was suboptimal and um, yeah it had a different thread to what it should have. The thread was pretty pretty poor really. I think someone had had a, a bit of a go at repairing it in the past. Anyway, um, I've chopped that off with the angle grinder and this video is all about making a new uh, mounting and uh, fixing it to the swinging arm. So yes, that does mean I'm gonna be doing some welding. Um, not my strongest uh, suit, but I am you know, learning and practicing as we go along. Crude, yes. Primitive, yes perhaps even a little grotesque. At least one of you would be able to name the movie that that comes from. But anyway, perhaps I'm judging myself too harshly. It's securely attached and, um, you know, it's all right. Um, who knows? You might judge me even more harshly. Um, pro welders, make sure you wear your dark glasses. Um, right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fix the swinging arm. Uh, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. A um, little bit of channel news, um, I've had quite a number of new subscribers, so thank you very much indeed, welcome aboard, you're very welcome indeed, um, we're up to 393 now, so well on our way to 400, which is fantastic, um, to my existing subscribers, thanks for sticking with me, um, I do appreciate it, I appreciate all the support and help that you give me, and all the great comments, um, shout out time, one of the new subscribers is Michael Waller from Britannia Motorcycles, and he is a, um, a fellow Yorkshire exile like myself. Um, he went a bit further on his exile. He's in um, upstate New York in the States, whereas I just came to the south of England. So, yeah, I didn't go as far as him. But um, his work is something that I've admired for a number of years. I've watched his channel for a number of years, and... Um, if you like what I do, uh, you'll be blown away by his stuff. He builds some of the nicest uh, British uh, trials bikes I think you'll ever see. Uh, he even makes his own frames as well. So, yeah, um, pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, so that's Michael Waller at Britannia Motorcycles. Um, go over there and, uh, and check out his channel. I think you will definitely like what you see. Um, I haven't done it for a while, so I'm going to shout out my um, my friends and family. Uh, Carl Wilson, he's my brother. He's got a channel called Carl Wilson. Um, he does a lot of uh, machine work and uh, machine refurbishment and general engineering, and he's a very clever fella. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, he's going to teach me how to use my new TIG welder. Uh, so big shout out to him. Um, we've got AG a a Engineering. Um, He's been giving me lots of support and advice. So big shout out to Aid. And um, of course, Will at Coleman Customs. Um, great channel. Showing us how to do a YouTube channel. Um, yeah, he's got some good stuff on his channel. Go and have a look. Um, Triumphs. If you like Triumphs, you'll love Will's channel. Um, and then, um, of course, Dale. Dale Swagger over in the States doing the... Um, Japanese, 70s Japanese trials bikes. Um, yeah, meticulous, beautiful machines. You'll definitely find something you like if you go and have a look at him. So that's the shout outs done. Um, thanks for all your support and um, we'll get on with some work. Well, a bit more work going on on the swinging arm for the D7 Bantam. Uh, as you can see, I've been uh, at it with the angle grinder, and um, it used to look like that. And uh, it used to have this mounting in there, and uh, the boss at the back, the turned boss at the back, was brazed to the swinging arm. So I've chopped that off and um, used the flapper wheel to get rid of all traces of the brazing. Um, and the reason why I've done it is because it's supposed to have. Uh, a 3 8 by 26 TPI, which is British Standard Cycle thread and nut on the um, uh, the rear suspension unit mounting. 
and um, on this side it didn't have it had this this nut here um, which doesn't go all the way on and um, someone has recut the thread I don't know what that is it could be um, a Whitworth thread or it could be SAE it could be anything really um, whatever it is it's not correct and the nut that came with it doesn't go all the way on so um, I've decided to make a new um, rear suspension mount a uh, lower mount for the swinging arm so we'll turn one of those up on the lathe um, there's a nice sort of three quarter inch boss that goes on oh, you can't see it three quarter inch boss that goes on there in fact there it is like that and then it drops into there and then I'll probably just TIG weld it onto here um, because I don't have brazing equipment uh, and that will restore our swinging arm so that's another little job that I've picked up and um, I'm getting on with so here's the replacement rear suspension unit mounting that I've been making for the swinging arm and um, as you can see it's pretty much there um, I haven't filmed the turning operations on this one because it's very similar to the um, the bush extractor that we recently made I don't want to swamp you with um, too many sort of simple turning videos really um, but there's a couple of diameters on there we've got the boss which um, will sit on the inside of the swinging arm and be welded in um, the original one was brazed in um, I don't have gas brazing equipment but um, I've never actually had a go at TIG brazing so I might have a little bit of a practice get some rods and have a practice and if, uh, if I find that I can do it I might TIG braze this in um, but if I can't do it I'll just weld it um, because you know I know I can I can make a reasonable attempt at that um, we've got our half inch diameter that the um, rear suspension unit sits on and it looks long but um, you lose part of that in the in the thickness of the swinging arm um, flange and then obviously we've got our diameter at the end for the thread and the lathe hit all the numbers again I was really impressed um, I love this machine it, it really does a good job so I hit my half inch down to zero I hit my three eighth down to zero and I think I did that but just over 750 thousandths um, I measured the, the one on the other side it was just a little bit over three quarter so I, I made it the same um, I've been using the other side actually the opposite side as a datum because the one that I cut off if you remember um, had been messed about with I don't know how much it had been messed about with I think it's a little bit shorter than the original I don't know how maybe the pack sort a bit off the end I don't know but um, anyway um, I used the other side the good side shall we say as the datum so I need to put some threads on um, I did think about single pointing it, but I've actually ordered the correct die, the um, 3 8 uh, British Standard Cycle die, it's 26 TPI. And um, I'd like to get a collection of um, cycle uh, taps and dies, and so I thought, well, here's a good place to start, and I've ordered the right one. So we'll put that in um, using the tailstock and um, the die, uh, die wrench. And um, once that's done, we can part it off and get it into the swinging arm. But uh, I've got a, a girling unit here, which I will just slot on. There we go. So that will sit up to the end of there with a washer on it. And then, I don't know if you can see, it's not the best. Let me move you along on the carriage a little bit. There you go. You can see that there's a gap there for the thickness of the swinging arm. Um, so there we go. So, as long as I don't cock up the rest of the job, uh, we should be on to a winner and uh, restore our swinging arm back to uh, factory standards. So, let's, um, let's get on with it. Well, the split die came in and um, I've cut the thread. It worked very well. More than happy with that. Um, seven quid from RDG Tools did the job. Um, I didn't intentionally... Uh, leave it out of the video I just um, I thought I'd pressed the little red square on the camera and it bleeped and it hadn't it wasn't recording so I missed it unfortunately but you haven't missed much it was just me running uh, a die down a piece of metal but there you go proof of the pudding we've got a nice thread it's um, there's no slop in it it's just how you'd expect it to be so there we go right Put the nut on there don't lose it right we just need to uh part off now and um i've got the parting tool in already as you can see um i'll get measured up for that and um i think it's um 
I think it's an eighth. I'm not entirely sure. I'll measure off the other side on the swinging arm, but I think it's, I think it's about an eighth of an inch that we need um, on the um, the height of the boss. So I'll confirm that. We'll get set up, and then you can watch me part it off. Right. Well, it was an eighth of an inch, so I've dialed in 3.2 millimeters on the travel dial, which is uh, as near enough as we need to be, I think. And um, I'm just going to lock off the saddle so that we don't get any wandering and um, we'll give it a go i'm set at 240 rpm at the moment it should cut off reasonably well at that um, although this is you know we're quite close to the chuck so i'm not too worried about the unsupported bit but let's give it a go see what happens turn your super cut on and we'll uh we'll go for it Parting tool looks all right, the, the tip. Um, I'm using quite a lot actually, this tip. And uh, yeah, I haven't changed it in a good old while, so it seems to be lasting. So I'll just turn it around and, um, well, put it in the other way around and face the pip off, break the edges, and uh, good to go. Right, let's take a nice little skin and get rid of the pip. I have to say, the finish that the parting tool leaves is absolutely beautiful. And then I go and ruin it. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Let's take the edge off of it. And uh, call it done. in the net, press the lathe on the video. There we 
the gel. Happy days. So there is our finished objet d'art. Ready to go into its new home. In the swinging arm. So I'm just going to um, turn this around and then I'll get my steel rule and uh, we'll do some comparison. You're a bit zoomed in. Oh, yeah, let me zoom you out one second. Right, that's better. Um, you can see both sides of the swinging arm. So I'm going to measure the section where our girling unit bolts on. Uh, and this is just using a steel rule. So rough and ready. 21 millimetres. I'm just going to press that hard up against there. We have got 21 millimetres. If I measure the threaded portion, I've got 10 millimetres. If we measure the thread on this one, we've got just short of 10 millimetres. So, um, yeah, happy days. Good, good. Now then, what did I do with that um, rear suspension unit? What did I do with it? Put it down somewhere. Because I was just going to compare... Um, you know, push it up against the swinging arm and compare it. But um, what have I done with it? Is the question. Let me find it and then um, we'll have a look. Well, there isn't much room in this workshop, but I, I managed to lose it, and it was right under my nose. Um, so there we go. Let's get that on there. The camera battery is making noises at me, so we need to get a move on. Um, yeah, perfect. That bush is protruding quite a lot. So once there's a washer on there and. Uh, we get our nut on, we'll be good. But it is, as you've seen, identical to the other side anyway. And um, yeah, I'm happy with it. So we just need to glue it with sparks now, don't we? And um, put some paint on and that's the job finished. Right, I've got your hand held because I was really struggling to get the camera uh, into a position where you could see anything um, with the with the camera mounts, the camera stands. I've I've welded it. Um, I decided that I wasn't going to mess about with TIG brazing and, and trying something new. I just wanted to get the job done. So I've welded it up. Um, I've just welded it on two sides um, because if you think about it, it's like a bolt. The you know the welding is just to stop it from coming out when you when you're dismantling. When the things you know when the girling unit's on here and it's bolted up, it can't go anywhere because it's like a bolt head on this side. Um, so anyway, I've welded it and I've blended it out with the uh, flapper wheel. Not the most beautiful, but certainly um, fully penetrated welds and um, it is very secure. So I'm thinking that when I finish the D7, it's um, it'll be high time to invite my brother down and see if he'll give me a bit of a masterclass on TIG welding because I definitely need it. I can make joints, you know, I can make things um, stay together and uh, I can make them strong enough. But yeah, they're not the most attractive things in the world, are they, quite frankly? So what I'm going to do now is, um, is get some primer on there and then some top coat and uh, that'll be the job done. Just sort of touching the bits where I've, um, where I've um, removed the paint. And uh, there's a couple of areas on the swinging arm that I'll probably touch up obvious areas that have gone rusty. But um, like here, for example, around this joint here. But I'm certainly not going to paint the whole thing because that would defeat the object of the exercise to make this bike, you know, a good runner, um, but wear its age, as it were. So I'll get the camera in the stand. We'll get some primer on there and um, we'll let that dry. And then we'll touch in the top coat. All right, I've got you a reasonable view there. As you can see, it's already looking a little bit better. Um, the dab of our, oop, get it in focus. No nonsense, red oxide primer. I'm wearing my gloves. I've got my overall uh, coat on because I've got a paint tin open. And that means I'll get it all over myself. Do ignore the mess in the background 
the workshop's looking a bit uh, a bit untidy again, but uh, small shop, lots going on. It's kind of inevitable. Anyway, I think we're just about done with this. Definitely looks better. Good coat of that. Uh, just twizzle it around and see if there's any bare metal I'm missing. Now oh, we got it. Then we got it. There we go. Let that dry and um, a little bit of black top coat on. I think we're on to a winner. Right there, we have the finished article. Um, I have given it a, a lick of black paint. Um, it's a little bit shiny, but I can knock that back and blend it in a little bit with some production paper and sort of make it look. You know, more in keeping with the rest of the paint job and the aging paint on the swinging arm. But um, I'm pleased with the way it's turned out. Um, the pin's in nice and straight, 90 degrees to the bracket, which is good. Um, so that's it. Another job off the list, another repair done. And uh, those of you that do this kind of thing will know how satisfying it is when you make a part yourself. Uh, there's just something about it that uh, gives you a good feeling and um, that's another one done um, quite unlike me I didn't waffle on about materials which I don't know I must be feeling unwell or something um, I made this from the same uh, bar stock that I used for the bush extraction tool on the last video and again quite unlike me um, I hadn't marked the blank so I think it's EN21. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm I'm fairly certain it's the same material I used for um, paddock stand pins for a race bike job that I did uh, a couple of years ago. And I've had that kicking around for a while, so it's good to get it used. And it machined uh, it machined nicely, and the thread cut nicely. So um, yeah, pleased with it. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, thanks very much indeed for uh, watching the video and um, I shall see you soon.